The challenge is with, the, with these four things that I put up there is they all kind of lead into one another, right? Let's say some, a relationship gets violated, just that one that you're thinking about right now. Well, an unaddressed violation, eventually what happens? That relationship breaks, right? Well, now I don't want to tend to the broken relationship, so then in the end, it's easier just to let it go. So now the relationship's lost. And a lost relationship, eventually you just move on and that relationship essentially dies. So reconciliation, we can all be at some stage within this experience, right? And they all kind of play into each other. I wish it was simpler, it's not. So if these are the realities, what are the needs for each of these realities? So stick with me. A violated relationship needs what? Forgiveness. Repentance. If something is broken, what does something broken need? It needs fixing. It needs mending. It needs healing. What about something lost? If you're in a relationship right now that is lost, it needs finding, searching. And the last one, if something has died, what does it need? It needs a funeral. It needs to be grieved. Something has been lost. It needs to be honored and grieved for what once was and is now no longer. Honor, grief. The last thing I'll touch on as we unpack what is reconciliation is some of the strategies that we use to avoid reconciliation. This is my favorite part because I'm like the master of avoidance strategies. So you're in a relationship right now that needs reconciliation. I bet you one of these five or all of these five are some of the, the, the things we all choose to use. Fight, flight, or freeze. You ever heard that? All right. Relationship needs something. Maybe it's lost. Maybe it's broken. Maybe it needs fixing. Maybe it needs forgiveness. You know what? I, fight, flight, or freeze. I'm going to fight you, run away from you, or just kind of do nothing. Great strategy. Another favorite one of mine, the best drug in the world, denial. If it didn't happen like that, then I don't have to face it. You're just being dramatic. That's ridiculous. That didn't happen. I feel better about myself. Denial. If I don't see it, I don't have to show up to it. Okay. Well, typically a great way to use denial is, is it's got like these like kind of cousins, minimizing and shaming people. I'm really good at that. I know how to minimize a situation or I know how to shame someone, including myself. Don't be a baby. I show up to someone, tell them what it, like how hurt I am by them or they show up to me and I go, dude, you're just acting like a baby. You're making this into such a big deal. And so we can kind of keep people in their place. It's a great strategy, minimizing and shaming people, including ourselves. The fourth one's great, instant demands. Hey, you and I are not okay. Well, how's it going with sunset? Well, I sent him a text, he didn't respond. I guess that's it. It didn't work out. I guess he doesn't want to be friends. I guess it's over. Who remembers dial-up internet? Anyone remember dial-up internet? <laughs> I see that hand, I see that hand. Dial-up internet, I'm thankfully old enough to remember how painful it was, right? Phone line, after about seven times of trying to connect, you finally get through and that, that crazy sound, you get connected. You finally get connected. Well, you better know what web page you're going to. You type in the wrong web page, you're going to spend a good five minutes with that thing loading line by line by line and go, oh, it's not the right web page. Type in the next one. So you want to know where you're going. You better have patience. And it's a process and it's a complete journey. I would love to take a whole bunch of kids, do an experiment, put them in front of dial-up and just watch them and film them. <laughs> yeah. You want to be ungrateful? <laughs> you know? <laughs> 